We start the series with Tyg Kennelly. Of course. Tyg was the first Irishman to win the AFL Premiership when Sydney Swans triumphed in 2005. He is now back at the Sydney Club where he is assistant coach. It's two years now since you came back to Swans. How are you enjoying it? Is it good to be back? Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, it's just like home, really. I've, um, I suppose I never, I, I wasn't sure whether I'd coach or come back into the club once I finished playing, but um, I slowly started doing some coaching under 18s in uh, New South Wales and um, working with the academy, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm coaching the, the reserve team last year, and, um, and then the horse asked me to be the, the defensive coach, so it's great to have an assist, assistant coach role, and um, yeah, it's, I love it. Absolutely love it. And I mean, yeah, you did achieve a hell of a lot, obviously, winning the Premiership, first Irishman to do so, and, and then go home and win the All-Ireland. So, um, yeah, can you even compare which, you know, if, which one means more? And I, know, I know exactly it's the All-Ireland, because you won that for your father, isn't it? Yeah, they, they both mean the world to me, really, because they're very, very different, you know. Um, like I said, I was 18 when I came out here, and I took up the challenge, you know. I really had my life set as, a, as an 18-year-old in, in Kerry. I was going in playing senior football for Kerry, and I was going to play football for Kerry for basically the, um, you know, the rest of my manhood as, as such as, as I could. Um, and then I decided, you know what? No, nah, I'm going to up and go, and I'm going to go try this professional game in Australia and try AFL, which was it was hard. You know, it was very, very hard at 18, leaving the other side of the world and learning a new game and, and trying to master it, and, and then obviously to go on and win the premiership. Um, it meant a lot to me. It was a, a real s sense of self-satisfaction. The fact that I was able to do something to put myself outside the outside the box. I could have easily taken the easy, easy choice, the comfortable choice, and I decided not to. That I was going to step outside the box and make a difficult decision at 18, and, and, and I was able to achieve the ultimate. So that was a lot of, like I said, I felt real proud of myself. Um, and then, of course, going back in 2009, growing up as a Kerry man, and um, you know, you, you've nothing in Kerry unless you've got an all Ireland medal. Um, and my dad had won plenty of them, my brother had won a couple of them, and you know, I wasn't going to let them get up, have one without me. Um, and of course, losing my father in 2005 really sped that process up as far as wanting to go back and try and win all Ireland. It was really an emotional occasion. Um, I was quite, quite wound up the whole, the whole occasion of grand, uh, grand final, all Ireland week. Um, and you know, I was really spent a lot of nervous energy in that because I knew the occasion was so big. Because it really was something that I dreamt about since I was a child. And people talk about that cliche, that line all the time, you know. But I really watched Kerry football, and, and that's all I ever wanted to do, really, as a young man. And to be in that opportunity at 28, 29, I thought I would have done it a lot earlier. Um, and I was thinking, God. I'm not sure I'm going to get many more of these opportunities. And the, all that build up and the emotion was a huge, huge moment for me, and I was glad I was able to achieve it. Of course. And I mean, like, the, thing, the, the way you did it like that, I bet when you were leaving Kerry to come down here, people were like, you're mad, you want to stay here. And then when you were leaving your, your, you know, your, your brilliant, you know, when you were leaving Sydney Swans, they were probably like, you're mad, what the hell are you doing that for? So you can't please people either. But it meant that much to you, you just, you were, you were going to do it no matter what. That's right. Um, it was the worst financial decision of my life, really, going back. My, uh, my wife at the time was thinking, what are you doing? You're going back having to get a job and uh, you know, leaving a lot of money behind a full-time professional contract. But it was something that I had to do and I wanted to do, and I knew that if I didn't do it, um, I wouldn't have been happy in life, you know. Um, and I'm glad I, I, I went back and actually tried to do it. And it would have been interesting if I didn't win it, what, what I would have done. Would I have stayed? And... Uh, in Kerry, I'd probably still be in Kerry, I'd say, if I didn't actually win it, and I thought I would have come back, and at that age, 28, 29, um, I probably would have been too old to come back, I haven't spent two years out of the game of AFL, I came back and played two more years. Um, if I didn't win the all Ireland, I probably would have stayed in Kerry, I'd say. Tag was involved in recruiting Irish stars to play Aussie rules in his previous role with the AFL. Of course, and I mean, there, there's those who might lament that the talent that's lost to the GAA but that's just inevitable when it's when it when it's when it's amateur I guess and people get an, an opportunity and who's to blame them for taking it you know yeah look I, I see both sides of the argument yeah I understand if I was a, a young man in, at home in, in Kerry and, and I'm watching Mark O'Connor go play for Geelong I wouldn't be happy you know and um, it'd be tough to watch because that's what you bleed at home and you bleed Kerry football and you don't want to see your best talent going and I also see the other side of the argument is a young man getting an opportunity to play professional football uh, to challenge himself against in a game that he knows nothing about uh, and an opportunity like I said to to put it up against people in a game that you don't know so I understand both both sides of the argument which one's right 
who knows? I know the fact that I've been able to live both of them. Uh, in fact, I've gone back and play football at home and, and, and play as a professional here at the Swans. Um, it's a tough one. Uh, and, and I see both sides of the arguments. I understand both sides of the arguments. But I also understand that there's been about 70, close to 70 Irish players that have come out here. There's only three of us that have played over 150 games of AFL football. The majority go back. That's the first thing I say to players and anyone that talks to me about coming out here. It's, it's you know, sorry about the French, but it's fucking hard. And it's a hard thing to do because you're playing a game that you have nothing, you knew nothing about, and you, you haven't been able to grow up with it, and you don't understand it, and it, it's it's tough. And, and the majority of players go back, and they go back better Gaelic footballers because they've lived in the environment of being a professional for a couple of years. I was wondering, do you follow as well the Irish ladies in the AFLW? Because um, Ailish did emulate your little jig. Were you pleased to see her do that? Of course, um, yeah, of course I do. You look, and again, it's the people from your own background and culture. You know, you only, you only want to support and and and, and help. And uh, yeah, it's great to see. You know, um, hopefully we see many more Irish jigs in in, in a couple in September. It'd be nice on the podium. Of course. And um, what do you think about the international rules? Should something be done there to create more interest? I'd love to see fans get get a bit more excited about it on both sides, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's difficult. It is hard. I understand the, you know, the demands on both codes, as far as the GA and the AFL are concerned. There's a lot going on, a lot on their plates. It's hard to get momentum up because it's a year or two years between games, and it's hard to get the, the, the momentum going. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. Um, it's an opportunity for you to represent your country, which both codes don't get. And you talk to any player that's played it, they absolutely love the experience and love playing for their country. And that's part of the international rules, and, and, and I hope it does continue because it's an avenue, like I said, to, to represent your country. Excellent. I think we should leave it there, Ty, but thanks very much. Too easy. Thank you very much for having me.